What's going on Pectus Warriors? It's Riley from PectusPT.com and in today's video I'm going to talk about all about Pectus Excavatum. What it is, like actually what it is, what causes it, how common is it, male to female ratio of it, and common other conditions that are associated with it all actually may cause Pectus. So it's just going to be a little informative video all about Pectus. So without further ado, let's do it. So, what is pectus excavatum? Well, I'm sure you probably know, you probably have it, or your kids have it, but basically, it is a deformity in which the chest wall caves in, which results in a hole-like appearance in the middle of the chest. So, as you can see, I have it, but it doesn't look too bad now, but that's because I have built my physique up and drastically minimized the cosmetic extent of my condition through exercise, but I'll talk more about that later. But anyway, that's what pectus is. Now, this concave chest Consequently, often pushes the ribs out and creates the flared ribs that is very associated with pectus excavatum and is often more of a problem and issue for the, the person with pectus than the indent itself. I know for me, I was more self-conscious about the rib flare than I was the actual indent, although I was very self-conscious about both. And then this rib flare also creates a pot belly. So if you're wearing shirts, you often see like the pot belly sticking out and it just doesn't look very appealing. Now, everyone's case of pectus is different. We're all born with different cases of pectus. We all have different severities, different depths. Uh, some cases are asymmetric, some are not symmetric. It's actually very common for cases of pectus to lean to one side. So, people out there who are judging saying, oh, you don't have pectus, you don't have this, oh, mine's way worse. We all have pectus and we all have our own struggles. So, I just want to get that out there. Now, typically we are born with pectus. So, it is a condition which you are born with and the condition typically gets worse as you go through adolescence. There are some cases where it's not really reported that you're born with it, and it just kind of grows in adolescence, but more likely than not, you were born with it, born with a slight indentation, and as you grow, it gets worse in the teenage years, which is unfortunate because teenage years, that's when you become more self-conscious about your body, and that's when the condition really gets worse. Now, I know I mentioned before that everyone's case has different severities, different depths, and there is a way that they measure that called the Hawler Index. So the Hawler Index is, is a number which is calculated by measuring the distance between the maximum depth of the severity to the sternal notch and then the sternal notch to the back of the vertebrae. I'll put up like a little picture that shows exactly how this is calculated. And essentially in most cases, and they calculate this through like a radiographic scan and a normal chest will typically give a whole index of like two or below. Anything more than two is normally pectus and anything about, about above three is classified as a more severe case of pectus. But that being said, I don't really like to subclassify as like severe or mild or whatever because we all have our own struggles, like I said, and it affects all of us psychologically in more cases than not. So to just say, oh, your case isn't very deep, like that's just not very nice or fair because it can still affect them and it's still not a real normal looking chest so yeah additionally this scan is often used to calculate if someone needs surgery if their scans about 3.2 or more but again I don't think this is right I think if you should have surgery not based on some number from a Hawler index you should have surgery if you've got a physiological problem aka it's affecting your heart or lungs which is common with pectus I'll get into that more later or it's affecting you so much cosmetically, you've tried exercise, you've tried everything, and you feel like it's the only route you can go. But I honestly think you haven't really given exercise a proper crack, if that's the case. So in case you're wondering, I have never got my whole index calculated because I didn't care, I didn't need a number to tell me that I had pectus. I know I had pectus. I can see for myself how deep it is, how severe it is. And I also knew that I was gonna do everything in my power to make it look as best as possible through exercise. So I just didn't bother with that personally. All right, so how common is pectus? Well, I've looked at a variety of data sources, a variety of studies, and for me, the average seems to be that it is about one in every 300 people have pectus. So uh, some, some studies said one in 500, some said one in 200, but typically it was about one in 300. And for me, my personal experience is I went to a school of 500 kids for high school, and there was about five of us with pectus. So that's one in 100 there. And um, just going down the beach, walking around, I see it heaps, to be honest. So it is quite common. So we're not alone, guys. There's heaps of fellow pectus warriors out there. 
So, um, yeah, just know that you're not alone and it is quite common. Now, I know females out there reach out to me quite often and yes, girls can have pectus. It's actually also quite common, but the ratio of males to females tends to be, according to this study, five to nine to one. Again, these statistics are not that accurate because it's based on like surveys and stuff like that. There's no like, you're not born and classified, do you have pectus? So it's like a legitimate statistic. It's like probably a, that they calculated these by getting like research groups and random samples and stuff. But it seems pretty accurate and it's good enough to go off. So what causes pectus? Well, it seems to be pretty genetic. So I've looked at a few studies again. One study showed that 37% of pectus sufferers had a first degree family member with pectus. And another showed that 47% had a first degree family member with pectus or, or a variation very similar to it. So, so it is quite common to run in the family and seems to be a genetic thing. Otherwise you're just born with a, like a mutation of the gene and then you get pectus. But more often than not, it seems to be carrying down through bloodlines. So for me, for example, I can vouch for this because my dad actually has pectus carinatum. So his chest goes out and mine goes in. Probably prefer the first of the two, but got to work with what you got with. Hey. On that note, I will be producing a video about pectus carinatum soon. The reason I hadn't is because I don't personally have it. So I don't feel like I have really the credibility to talk about it, but no one else is really talking about it on the internet. So I feel like if I can provide my two cents on how to best improve it, I will. And for anyone out there with pectus carinatum or just out of general interest, it seems to be that pectus excavatum is about nine times more common than carinatum. All right, so what are the effects of pectus? Well, obviously it has a cosmetic impact. So it obviously affects your psychology because if you have this indentated chest, a bone deformity, you don't look normal, often that's going to affect your psychology, your self-esteem, positive body image, etc. I, for one, experienced this majorly. I was very lacking confidence when I was a child, a teenager, depressed about the way I looked and really wanted it to change. And this is very common. I have hundreds of people reach out to me all the time saying, it's really getting me down having pectus. So it's got a psychological impact. That's one of, that's the biggest effect I'd say. And the most common effect is like the depression, the poor self-esteem that it causes. But aside from that, there actually often is a physiological impact, which is generally more prominent and more of a health concern in more severe cases. But I dare say that almost every case has some form of physiological effect as well. Again, I experienced this too, but I'll talk about the effects firstly and then talk about my experience with that. So common physiological effects is it does impair the heart and the lungs. The more severe the case, often the more impaired it is because it's actually protruding the, the function and the, the, the positioning of the heart and lung. And therefore your heart and lungs will not function properly, resulting in a diminished lung capacity and chest pain. You can get shortness of breath really quickly and even sometimes temporary loss of consciousness where you faint. So for me personally, I experienced all of these, but to a mild degree, I've experienced little amounts of chest pain, but not like, ah, uh, killing me kind of chest pains. I do experience heart pain quite often. I'm not sure if that's pectus. I know people without pectus do, but my, the amount that I experience heart pain is probably a little more than normal. Um, I know for a fact, whenever I stand up really fast after having sit, sat down or lie down for a while, you know how you like faint when you stand up? That happens to me all the time, especially when I was younger. I just feel like that would be correlated with pectus. And um, also shortness of breath had been a huge thing for me, especially before I started weight training and doing cardio respiratory training and building that up. I used to just run out of breath so quickly. I remember playing sports as a kid, I'd always be like, <sighs> And just completely, I actually used to have like a puffer because they, I had like mild asthma where I'd get really wheezy like from doing runs and stuff. So that's very common with pectus and I still suck at cardio. Like I just can't keep up and this seems to be a very common trend. So I get the shortness of breath. I get the temporary loss, loss of consciousness, although I never actually faint. I just get really like lightheaded and black, black outy and the chest pain is quite common as well. So they're like physiological effects. Obviously the heart and lungs are very important organs that we need functioning properly. So if it's like a major health concern or you're getting really bad pain, then I definitely recommend potentially going down the surgical route or consulting your doctor about this. I'm not a doctor. I do not have any kind of formal doctor qualifications. So this just take what I'm saying is just, I'm just saying it. I'm just stating my opinion. None of this is actually like medical advice, just so you know. 
But yeah, I, th I thought I'd just say just with my experience since I started exercising, I really improved those physiological effects of the loss of consciousness, like that lightheadedness rarely happens for me now. And shortness of breath is definitely delayed to be onset, but I still do suck at cardio, I won't lie. And I don't do that much cardio either, I won't lie. I much prefer lifting weights. <laughs> but the biggest thing for me was overcoming the psychological impact, the negative self-esteem. I'm so confident with my body, like, Muscles, <laughs> whatever, like pectus, what? Like, I walk down the beach now, like, yo, where before I'd be like, ah, everyone's judging me, kind of thing. So, that's the biggest change that exercise did for me, and I'm so thankful for that. So, another interesting thing I found about pectus is it is associated with a bunch of other deformities or bone anomalies. Um, one study showed that 27% of cases of pectus are associated with another kind of anomaly. Two of the most common associated bone anomalies. Uh, kyphosis and scoliosis of the spine. So kyphosis, I've talked about this in heaps of my videos, that's the whole round forward posture. And again, that actually makes the condition look worse because when you round forward, it makes the indentation look more prominent. So you really wanna try and fix your posture, the kyphotic spine that is very commonly associated with pectus. Um, so that's one condition and then scoliosis as well. That's where the spine like bends to the side. I personally have never had that. I definitely did have kyphosis when I was younger and managed to improve that through exercise. But scoliosis is also very common and there are treatments for that through exercise as well. But I'm not like a rehabilitative or scoliosis specialist. I don't have too much expertise in that, but I know a little bit about it. But um, yeah, so scoliosis and kyphosis are very common with pectus. And other than that, there are other bone um, anomalies such as like the feet, and I for one have experienced this as well. My feet, I'm actually pigeon-toed quite severely, um, and I was born with that. So again, just if you have pectus, typically there's gonna be some other things going on in your bones, just probably due to that mutated gene that you were born with, and it just causes you to not be formed properly. But whatever, we can do our best to improve that. So, oh, also anterior pelvic tilt is also very common with pectus as well. Again, I experienced this and again, exercise can improve it. Anterior pelvic tilt, you need to strengthen your glute and hamstrings and stretch your quads because your quads will be very tight, your hip flexors are very tight from sitting all day, and that's putting you into that anterior pelvic tilt position. Anterior pelvic tilt combined with kyphosis results in pot belly accentuating, indentation accentuating, the worst postural position you want to be in. You want to improve that as best you can. Um, Marfan syndrome is another condition with a high correlation with pectus or sometimes causes pectus. So Marfan syndrome is like a connective tissue disorder and essentially people with Marfan syndrome have really long limbs. Um, a few other effects where their, their teeth get really crowded in and they have high brows in the teeth and some structural deformities, the kyphosis, the scoliosis, quite common with Marfan's as well. And then also Marfan's also affects the heart and lung. So it's kind of like a relative, sorry about the phone message. It's kind of like a relative of pectus itself. And I'd say that there is some like crossover with it because I mean, most people I know with pectus are very skinny and they have extremely long limbs. Look at me. <laughs> My arms are so ridiculously long in my legs and I have the shortest torso. So I'd say there definitely is a relationship going on there. Now, I know it all sounds bloody gloom and doom right now. Like, holy shit, like kyphosis, scoliosis, foot anomalies, like Marfan syndrome, ridiculously disproportionately long limbs to your torso. But good news, long limbs, big feet, big hands, big fingers, big toes. Makes good swimmers. Shame that swimming's like the one sport where you're seen topless and those practice people don't want to be seen topless, but look at Cody Miller, he's repping it. So, I mean, we're good swimmers. It's very common for practice people to be good swimmers. Me, kick out a swimmer. <laughs> Uh, anyway guys, that's that video. That's my little insight about pectus, some interesting little stats. Let me know if you found it interesting. Um, I'll try to do more of these where I'm like getting actual research and studies. I'm really trying to upskill and up educate myself on pectus so I can be like a leading expert out there. Um, I'm gonna look more into the surgical options, have a vid video that's non-biased. I'm not gonna just only promote exercise. I'm gonna show that the NAS and the rabbit and the different procedures, what they are, when they can be useful, and try and present it in as much unbiased as possible. Obviously, basically everything you read on the internet, there is some bias influencing it, but I'll try to keep myself as neutral as possible. Exercise all the way, I'm joking. Surgery can be, can be necessary. Anyway, that's the video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, 
give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. Join the Pectus Warriors family on Facebook. Join the Instagram page. Get ready for heaps of content, guys. I love you guys, and I feel like it is my mission to help you all improve your case of pectus. Let's get jacked. Let's improve our bodies. Let's overcome this condition psychologically. Psychologically, mentally, we have to become happy with our bodies. Confident, strong, muscular. Oh, man. I really feel like I can help a lot of you guys out there. I do have a coaching service, which I think would be great, and I do have some positions available for that. Also, I offer customized programs, Skype calls if you just want to get to know me. I've got heaps of different services, so the link for that will be in the description. Thanks again. Much love. Thanks for the support. I'm out. See you in the next video.